All right, my friends, welcome back to the Premier League show, and it's time to wrap up week 18 of the motherfucking Premier League. Yes, it was a good week of the Premier League. I'm sure you'll all agree. It was a magnificent week for me because West Ham did come out 3 0 winners against Stoke. They were woeful. We were brilliant. That is going to be one of the big talking points today. But before I crack on, uh, ladies and gentlemen, I do want to let you know that uh, there's been a slight change of plan as far as the schedule for the Premier League show is concerned. Um, there was supposed to be the wrap-up for Week 19 going out on Saturday, but I am way too busy. I'm going to be going to the Newcastle game and then I'm out for dinner and then after that... Uh, I'm out with my boys for our yearly Christmas drinks. We do it every single year, and uh, I completely forgot about it. I just don't have the time on the Saturday. So what I'm going to do instead is there's going to be a wrap-up and preview special. So it's basically going to be wrap-up for week 9, preview for 20, video split down the middle, and you're going to get both. I'll do the little time capsule, and then, you know, you can pick and choose what you want to watch. I hope that's all right. That'll be out on Christmas Eve. Do look forward to that. But today, we're going to wrap up week 18. Big talking points. Let's do this. Okay, my homies, my one and only. Let's crack on with the wrap up of week 18. Um, now, do you know what? Most times I would talk about Man City and have that as my top, top talking point. But, um, you know, the Man City fans that watch this, I mean this with no displeasure. I don't, you know, no offence to Man City, but I'm getting bored of talking about them. They're magnificent. They have been brilliant this season. And their demolition of Spurs compounded that and I don't want them to be my big talking point this week but my big talking point is actually going to be Crystal Palace and West Ham both of these teams have been struggling this season but both came away with very very important victories both winning by three goals to nil um, Crystal Palace's one is probably a little bit more impressive because they did come up against Leicester who are going very well in the league but nonetheless for West Ham to go to Stoke away from home not one away from home all season and beat them 3-0 is a brilliant, brilliant job. And these are two teams that have been down there in the relegation position, struggling for formal season, struggling for goals. But uh, yeah, they're doing a good fucking job. Both change managers, you know, quite early on in the season. And the new bosses have come in and are doing a great, great job. Crystal Palace, like I say, they beat Leicester by three goals to nil. Thoroughly deserved. I think they were the better team from start to finish. Um, some people are saying there was some controversy in the game. I don't think there's any controversy with... Uh, Indeed, he's sending off at all, at all, at all, at all. He was on a yellow card, he dived, he feigned, you know, the foul, tried to win a penalty, referee was having none of it, a yellow card, ta-ta, lad, uh, you're off the pitch. And you know what? It was nice to see. I, I personally like to see that. At the end of the day, the, you know, the referees have said they're going to stamp down on simulations this season, and nobody touched the player, and he threw himself to the floor like a sack of spuds, and he deserved his red card. But Crystal Palace were in full control before that even happened anyway. They were playing very well in the fixture. You know, Townsend, Zaha, Ben Teke, constant menace in the game. They destroyed Leicester at the end of the day. Leicester did have a goal chalk off but there was a play and push in the back the referee in this game actually had a really really good time of it and it was a weekend where referees struggled you know the referees are very inconsistent and it was probably the worst weekend so far for the officiating team uh, in my humblest of opinion um, but yeah a great result for Crystal Palace and it gets them out of the relegation zone now that was the early one and so obviously squeaky bum time for me um, you know and I thought West Ham if we fuck this up we could be stuck in the bottom three we need a good victory and West Ham would have fucking got it completely destroyed Stoke um, there was controversy in this game but uh, you're going to hear me say that quite a lot in this wrap up because referees didn't have the best time of it Watford versus Huddersfield is all I need to say about referees and having an absolute shocker uh, but yes we'll come to that shortly but West Ham they got a 3-0 victory a great victory for them. Um, I do want to touch upon, and this is banter, um, but I do need to touch upon this. Arnautovic, for me, is man of the moment as far as West Ham are concerned. Not only is he playing well, not only has he showed up, not only is he scoring goals, but he's full of banter for his old club. Now, for a good 75 minutes of that match, are we going to touch upon this? Because Mark Hughes uh, is bitter and he's a sour old puss, isn't he? Because of the things that he was saying. Uh, when Arnautovic walked off the pitch and Hughes, he was screaming at him. It was like a dad that was telling his son off and his son was like, fuck off, dad, I ain't listening to you. That's kind of how it come across. But for 75 minutes or so, Arnautovic was getting absolutely wrecked by 
the Stoke fans. I've been giving him so much abuse from start to finish, and he kind of put up with it, you know? And Mark Hughes has come out and said, you know, he burned all these bridges from one game and all the rest of it. I ain't being funny on that bitch ass for the move. He wanted to move to a bigger club. I'm sorry, Stoke fans, but West Ham, in my opinion, are a bigger club than you. He wanted the move, he got the move. Well, he was just playing his game, but the Stoke fans were giving him stick all game, and the biggest and funniest one of them all was when the Stoke fans were chanting, you're just a, you're just a waste of money, and he turned to the Stoke fans and give it the iron sign. Now, that's banter in itself, right? And then he was tapping the badge, but we giving him all this shit, and then, lo and behold, not long after, ball comes over the top, in the back of the net. It was written in the stars that he was going to score the goal, and he was the start of the show on the day. He could have had a hat trick easy. Um, the controversy in the game, not only is Mark Hughes' bitter comments after the game, Mark Hughes is a manager that I don't really have too much respect for. I think that he's kind of got by on his reputation from his Man United days, but... Um, you know, it was that controversy, but also Lanzini's dive. Now, it does look as though he's going to get a retrospective ban, two-game ban, but he does dive. He moves into the player, and some say he goes down because he's trying to avoid the challenge. Now, I'm old-fashioned. I'd rather he got fucking kicked up in the air, and then, it's, and then there's no excuse that it is a penalty. But... um is what it is. Looks like he's going to get banned for diving, but there's some consistencies there, at least. You know, indeed he gets sent off for his. He's going to get a retrospective two-match ban by the looks of things, which means he's going to miss the cup game in Newcastle, but I think we can live without him against Newcastle, but a great win for West Ham. We were completely at it. Stoke nowhere near us and are now really, really struggling. They're going to be down there near the relegation zone, and they've got some hard games coming up, and you know, we will cover that in the next preview, my friends. Um, now let's run through the rest of the games. Man City, let's talk about them, because because I have mentioned them already, a 4-1 victory against Tottenham Hotspur. Now, I said in my preview for this week that Tottenham were a team, if anyone was going to get anywhere near Manchester City, they were going to be one of them teams, because they're very good at going forward, creating chances, scoring goals themselves. By no means were they quiet in the fixture. They did go for it, but Man City proved what an unbelievable fucking unit they are by winning this game. Four great, great goals. De Bruyne again, on just on form. He is player of the season for me. He really is. He might not have signed from this season, but he just he's so he's just improved. He's gone to another level. It's just ridiculous how much he's improved in one summer. Raheem Sterling was excellent in the game. Uh, Aguero looked a bit gutty to be pulled off, but you know, Jesus come on and he did all right. He missed a penalty, which was a bit of a shame. Uh, but they destroyed Spurs. They were a better team. Spurs did grab a goal. Um, but Spurs, for me, they avoid so much criticism, and I, I don't agree with it, you know, because if, if Arsenal or Liverpool turned up and did this, they'd have got so much stick in the press, and Tottenham seem to avoid it for some reason. But Tottenham are a top six team, you know, they shouldn't be avoiding this criticism. You know, they rely far too heavily on one player. Ali's out of form. Ali should have been sent off in the game as well for me. Goes over the top of the ball. He could have broken De Bruyne's ankle. It's funny how, not long after that, De Bruyne goes in and scores the goal. It's almost as if it pissed him off and made him push on and prove a point. But, you know, there was some real dodgy stuff going on in the game. I think that Spurs were a little too tough in the challenge. Um, but, yeah, uh, we'll have to wait and see if anything gets done about that challenge from... Uh, from 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 uh, Delhi Alley, but you know, I think it should be personally because uh, I don't agree with it. It was it was not nice to see, but Man City just proving Championship form by turning over another one of the big boys this season. They go from strength to strength, and Spurs for me struggling. They've only won two games in their last six or seven, I believe it is. And I keep saying it, it's all well and, do, well and good doing it in the champagne games. You've got to do the bread and butter as well. Arsenal beat Newcastle by one goal to nil. It wasn't the best of fixtures, but we did see one of the best goals of the season. Um, ball comes out to Otzil and he cannons that with his left peg. Top bin Yano. And uh, yes, lovely goal. And can't take it away from him. See, when Otzil plays like this, I, I understand why people talk about him in the way they do but he just doesn't do it enough for me he's such a lazy footballer I know that's kind of his style he is very laboured but when he's on it he's fucking on it and you can see why Man United are sniffing about because he's obviously his contract's coming to an end Newcastle banging trouble aren't they right down there now I believe they're 17th in the table not one in a very long time. I don't think they expected to get much from this game, but it would have been good. They did have some chances. Arsenal, not at their scintillating best, and I just don't think they have been this season. It's uh, it's not too good uh, for Arsenal at the moment. I don't really consider them top six anymore, but January is around the corner. Maybe they will buy and improve. Uh, Brian and Ovalvian and Burnley finished nil-nil. I was actually quite surprised this one finished nil-nil. Brian haven't been having the best time of it. Burnley have been flying. Burnley have been having a brilliant, brilliant season. Uh, Brian were on top of the 
first half, missed the penalty. Unbelievable. Uh, they had the chance, didn't they, to win the game with that as well because Burnley didn't score. And the only time they did look like scoring in the second half, uh, Matt Ryan was in that goal, pulled off three very good saves and uh, helped Brighton take the points and kind of steady the ship a little bit. Burnley still go from strength to strength this season. Sean Dyke say each and every week, manager of the year for me so far. I know Guardiola is doing exceptional things at Manchester City, but nobody expect Burnley to be sitting in sixth or seventh place going into the halfway point of the season. And, uh, you know, they are my team of the year so far. Chelsea beat Southampton by one goal to nil. Um, this one was as close as the score so, uh, line suggests. Uh, Alonso with a great free kick, though, beating uh, Craig Forster in the back of the net. Lovely, jubbly, one goal. Oh, that's what won it for him. But Southampton did have chances, just didn't take them, and they continue to be goal shy. Nice to see Chelsea the last couple of weeks, though, pick up, get back in the title race after that loss to West Ham. It's nice to see they are a team with bounce back ability. I do like that word. Beautiful. It's nice to be able to get to use it. Now, we are going to talk about uh, Manchester United versus West Bromwich Albion. I'm leaving Watford and Huddersfield to talk about last because there's so much to fucking talk about. But Man United versus West Bromwich Albion, this one finished 2 1 to Manchester United, winning ways resumed for Man United um, but for me should have ended in a draw because Ashley Young for me fouls the West Brom player that's a penalty not given and surprise surprise the referees in the Premier League bottle it against the big teams once again uh, just not good enough really is it this was a boring game it really was one of my pals was watching it and then he switched over to watch German football and he said he was glad he did because the German game was far more entertaining which is not what I want to hear when we're talking about the Premier League it's supposed to be the best league in the world at the end of the day but another three points for Man United they stay within distance of City City are fucking flying mate they've won the league already but at least they're keeping it close but uh, just not close enough for me. Um, Bournemouth versus Liverpool finished four goals to nil. Now, this was an absolute fucking cracker last year. This year, yeah, Liverpool tore up the shreds, didn't they? Ripped them up like an old piece of paper. Uh, Coutinho was exceptional. He scored one of the goals of the season. Ghosting inside, takes a touch past him, bottom corner. Just, just unbelievable, really. Mo Salah keeps going from strength to strength, scores another fucking goal. Will he ever stop? He's signing the season. I've said about De Bruyne being, you know, player of the season. Salah, the old Caesar salad, he is, uh, he is definitely signing of the motherfucking season. And he's doing an exceptional job. And Liverpool, see, when Liverpool play like this, it makes me wonder why they can't do it every week. Maybe, maybe Klopp's naive and he picks weakened teams and then he gets the ump when he doesn't get the results. He needs to go with his strongest team week in, week out, where possible. I understand you have to rotate from time to time, but where possible, go with your strongest team. Because when you do, Kloppy, this is what happens. You win 4-0 and you move up the table and that's what you need to be doing. You want a Champions League space, you need to be doing this each and every week. Bournemouth, disappointing, but I did say in the preview they have a horrid time of it coming up. They've got really, really horrible fixtures. Uh, not a good run for them. And I think they're going to get dragged in down the bottom of the table with the run of games they've got. Uh, Everton versus Swansea finished as I thought it would. Swansea losing to Everton. Three goals to one. Um, Swansea actually went 1-0 up in the game, which surprised the fuck out of me because they find it hard to score. But Everton come back, fought back, and they're undefeated still aren't they under Allardyce unbelievable stuff really an impressive three points for him Wayne Rooney on the score sheet again he really is going through a little bit of a renaissance in the twilight of his career um, and it's quite nice to see because I don't hate Wayne Rooney I just think he's probably one of the most overrated footballers in world football and it's just because he's English this happens uh I loved him when he first broke on the scene, but then once he went to Man United, he had that hunger for the first couple of years, and then, yeah, I don't know, pit of that, not a fan, but it's nice to see him doing well this season. A good result for Everton as well. They continue to move up the table. Swansea sit bottom going in to week 19. Week 19, for those that don't know as well, is the halfway point. It means if you lose that fixture, you're bottom at Christmas and most teams get relegated there. But we will talk about that in the preview, my friends, because uh, an interesting game for Swansea next time up. And the last game we have to talk about, my friends, is the game that had absolutely everything. It had two sendings off that shouldn't have been sendings off. Four goals for one team. One player got slapped in the face and decided to fall to the floor and let the opposition ghost in and score a goal. Trust me, Watford were embarrassing. Huddersfield were delicious at times, but the referee needs to be sacked. He should never be allowed to referee in the Premier League. Again, I believe it was Michael Oliver. If it wasn't, 
and I'm bad mouthing Michael Oliver, I apologise, but I'm pretty sure it was Michael Oliver that refereed the game. Uh, four goals to one, Huddersfield won. Deserved, I think they were the better team, but Troy Deeney's sending off isn't a sending off. Yes, he goes through the back of the player, but there's no, there's no malice in it. It's just a silly, clumsy challenge from a striker. It's a yellow card. Hog for Huddersfield gets sent off in the second half for a second yellow. He knows nothing about it. He ain't even fucking looking, and they should just let that go. So there's two sendings off, right? Mariapa gets struck by lightning, falls to the floor for some weird reason, and Moy gets in and scores the second goal. What is Mariapa doing there? I've never seen anything so laughable. Um, another Huddersfield goal. Holobas ends up tackling, pulls off a great tackle. He gets a little tap on the cheek and he falls to the floor like he's been punched by Mike Tyson. It's fucking embarrassing. You should not be allowed back in the team anytime soon because De Poitro gets in and he scores a goal. And then the Corey gets a fucking goal for Watford that could arguably be one of the best goals of the season because he spanks it on the half volley and it goes in the back of the net. He had everything this game. I'm exhausted talking about it. But the biggest problem with this game was it all come about because the referee didn't have a fucking clue what he was doing in the fixture. He honestly looked as though this was the first game he'd ever, ever officiated. And it gave the fucking refs in the Premier League a bad name. Again, the inconsistencies in the Premier League over the last five or six years. It's just ridiculous. We've got to get to the bottom of this. Video referees need to be introduced. I know it takes away some of the fucking conversations. It takes away some of the opinions up the pub after the game. Not everybody wants that. Some people just want this to be a fair fucking sport. And me, I'm starting to feel that way because especially where the Premier League's concerned, it's worth a lot of money. These sendings off were ridiculous. And some of the actions of the players and the ref were ridiculous. And it was a fucking just a sideshow of a game. I think it was uh, Kamara was the one that was commentating it on Sky Sports. He was loving life. He was having a great laugh at it. But a good win for Huddersfield. Terrible for Watford. And they are on a slippery slope at the moment. Not very good for them. So there you have it. That is a week 18 all wrapped up for you, my friends. It was, it was a good one, wasn't it? It was an exciting week of fixtures. We've got week 19 coming up later uh, this week, the weekend. All the games are being played on Friday and Saturday. And then, you know, then we've got the Boxing Day games. So... My friends, preview for that will be up on Thursday. Do look out for it. The wrap-up for it will be out on the Sunday with that preview for week 20. Yes, I know it's getting confusing, but if you don't follow me on Twitter, make sure you do because I put out a schedule every week and you'll see it on the schedule pinned to the top of my Twitter. So do check that out. But that's it, my friends. If you are new to the channel, remember to like, share, and subscribe. But until next time, I've been Dan. You've been Legends. This has been the Premier League Show. Peace out, my homies. I will see you Thursday for the preview. And uh, But if you don't tune in and you're busy, have a good Christmas. Peace.